Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all the time and worthy to be praised. He is the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the Living God. He loves us with a true agape love. He wants to pour it in our heart, write it on our mind, and keep our heart and mind in perfect peace. He wants to keep you. You know, this world is filled with trouble. It says in the Bible that the whole world is laying in wickedness. We are supposed to keep ourselves in love, in God's love. We can go to Psalm 91 and, and be reminded of how to stay there. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And the next words are, you will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge. See, because that's who he is. It's what he is in every situation, in every circumstance. When that situation and circumstance is not there, when you're all right and you're having a what we call a good day, the Lord is our strength. He is our refuge. He is our help. See, God is salvation. And that salvation is covering us. We're in the salvation of God. Jesus is that salvation. When we said yes, we signed up. We said, here's my soul. <laughs> I don't want to be in charge of this thing anymore. I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me. I want you to wash my soul. I, I, want, I, want, a, I want you and I want your ways in me. We come to a place where we just want to lay our whole heart down, our whole mind, will, and emotions down, anything and everything about us. We just want to lay it all out before him because, see, we consist because of him. We are joined. We are, are physically made. <laughs> we are, uh, how do you just say it? We wouldn't have any thought or any cognizance <laughs> without him. He created us. He made us in his image, in his likeness. We come to him so that we can be clean and not filled with sin. And not have to perish into that, go into that lake of fire. Yeah, for sure. But it's really being in his presence forever and being like him. Having his light shine on us and having his light be in our hearts. I want to get up and I want to walk out my soul salvation in the knowledge of him and and just calling out on him all the time all the time how do you do that there's a song in your heart there's worship in you that even when you're going about your business on the job there you there's a meditation or there's a hum in you that's on to the lord <laughs> You may be busy about that situation and that circumstance. You might be laying it all down before him, but there's a hum in your heart. An unction for God. Should I use that word? That word was coming up anyway because of the, uh, we have the unction of the Holy Spirit. He's in us. The greater one is living in us to direct our steps in all things. To keep help us to keep our ears open to him rather than being so conditioned by the things that are going on around us. The more you hang out around bad company, your morals will be corrupted. I said that for myself and for others also. You can be turned away from the living God so easily. That's why we have to bring it before him and learn how to guard our heart and mind. He, he's the actual guard of our heart and mind. It's him who sown the word in our heart. It's him who put his word in our mouth. It's him who reminds us of all truth, of, of what he said. So that we can live by him. So that we can live in him. What's that one? <laughs> the Lord wants to keep our hearts and minds. He wants to keep us in perfect peace. He's not fussing at us to get us our attention. Whatever is going on, things are going to happen in this life. And all I know is that we don't lean on our own understanding on how we feel about this thing and how it, what it looks like. We lean on Him. We lean on the one who created, who, who created life, who picked up 
the dust of the ground and formed it, shaped it into a man, blew his breath into the nostrils of humanity. He created us. We're his. And we're, he, he loves us. God so loves the whole world, Jehovah, the Lord, God Almighty, the high and lofty one who inhabits in eternity. God so loved this world so much that he sent his only begotten son, the firstborn from the dead, the son of his love, the word, the expression of himself. He sent into this world. He made a flesh and blood body for him, an earth suit. So that anyone that would believe that God sent his son into this world would not perish but have everlasting life. He loves us with a true agape love. Trust me, he really wants to pour his love all over you. He wants to lift you up from that dung heap, from that pit, from that stress that you're under from the irritation that's irritating you. He wants you to find out that you're powerful, that no weapon formed against you will prosper, that you have the, the mouth of the lion of the tribe of Judah. You have the heart like that, and you can silence your enemies because you love him. It's all about being in love with him, staying in love with him, walking with him and talking with him. And all of this comes out because, see, the more you get to know him, know the Father, know the Son, know the Holy Spirit, the stranger's voice you won't follow. The Lord is your shepherd. He will keep you. You won't lack any good thing because the Lord is with you. Every blessing, every spiritual blessing, every blessing you need is in the spiritual realm. And because it's there, we have to learn how to walk in the Spirit. We're spiritual beings in a physical body. We learn to walk by the Spirit and we don't obey the lust of the flesh or the pride of life. But these are things we learn as we, as we go. The more we trust the Father, the more we come searching for Him and, and getting an understanding of Him in the Word. I mean, He'll do, he, you know, we act like we gotta do this work. We don't have to do this work. We come in here and we rest. We come to the Word and we rest. We're like, okay, I'm hungry, Lord. I want to eat. Feed me the knowledge of your will. <laughs> and He'll reveal that as we walk through our daily life. There's no situation or circumstance that is greater than His love for you. He knows you're hungry. He knows you, you need clothes. He knows you need the rent paid. He knows your mortgage needs to be. He knows the car paid. He knows. He knows everything you need. But we're supposed to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right way of living, his right way of being, his right way of doing things. Just lay it all out before the Lord. But take up his word because that's the sword that's in your belly. That's the sword that's in your mouth <laughs> that goes out and devours your enemies. If anything's standing in the way, it'll fall. And if the Lord allowed that trouble to come, he's waiting on you to, to come to him and sit down and say, Lord, I don't know, but I know you do. Not with hatred or bitterness or envy. Shake off all the strife. Cast your care before the Lord. Ask him if you if you have unforgiveness toward anybody or an, it, just any irritation toward anyone. You bring that before the Lord. And you say, Lord, help me with this. You have forgiven sins. The, for, the sins of the whole entire world. And that's a lot. And you don't remember our sins when we come to you. Please help me not to remember the sins that somebody else has committed to me. You know, isn't that in the prayer that Jesus gave? Our Father which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins. If I skip something, please forgive me. But forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and Jesus tells us in, in a few passages that if you don't forgive, 
How can God forgive you? How can you be forgiven? And how many times will this person sin against me? Well, that was a whole lot of, what is it? I'll write the passage in the description, but 77 times 70, 70 something, it was a lot. And I haven't had anybody sin that many times against me in the same day. Nobody. And I've had it rough, but (laughs) nobody. I noticed that the sin was the same and it didn't occur every day. So we cast the care before the Lord. Let him heal your heart. Let him bring you into remembrance of his will for you and for anyone else. The Lord won't let us sit in idleness or in bitterness. I'm telling you, please trust me. Come to the word of God and drink from the table that he set before us. Learn of him so that we can grow strong in the Lord and get going because, see, Jesus is soon to return and his bride has to make herself ready. Are we ready for the salvation of God? I mean, when we really meet him, and I mean, are we ready to meet him in the air? Will Jesus find faith when he comes in you? Not looking around the world. Stop looking around the world. (laughs) Will Jesus find faith in you? Let's meet him in the air. Let's be ready (laughs) to meet Jesus in the air. Let's cast all of these cares that we have before him and start picking up the word of life. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Lord is your light. He's your salvation. He's the strength of your life. So put on Christ today. And that means put on the word of God. Be filled with the knowledge of his will for yourself and for the people around you. He loves you with a true agape love. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson at Get the Word in Your Face International. Get the Word in Your Face. Eat him up. Drink him up. (laughs) Because he is our life. Bye-bye. Thank you.